Carmela Wyant joins me now, and uh, Carmela has a, a tough story to tell, and um, I'm very thankful that you are here to share it. I know it brings up a lot of painful memories, but can spare a lot of families some really kind of unnecessary grief. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So we have um, some pictures and a quilt here that have special significance. Um, the pictures are of your son, David, and, um, and the quilt was something you made for him and is for his high school graduation, right? Yes. Okay, so tell us about David and tell us how you got to be here. Um, David loves sports especially baseball. He was a very, very great pitcher and played first and third base. And uh, matter of fact, Wednesday night he had stopped over at the house and put his arms around me and he said, Mom, I'm going to make yours and Grandpa's dream come true. And I laughed and said, uh-oh, which one is this? And <laughs> yeah. He said, I spoke with the Clippers, and he said, I'm heading down next week to speak to the Reds. And he says, I am going to make the Reds. I'm telling you now, I am going to play. And I said, David, anything I can do for you, I will do whatever it takes, because this has always been your dream. Mm -hmm. It's always been in your heart to play baseball. So go for it. Uh -huh. You know, do your dreams. And that next Monday, um, it's okay. Mom's worst nightmare. His fiance had called and told me that he had been in an accident, but she didn't know anything else about it. So um, I ended up calling the dispatch, and they gave me the hospital number and told me which hospital. So I, in turn, called the hospital, and I said, is David Money at this hospital? And the lady that answered said, can you hold on? And so she put me to somebody else. And I really thought I might have been talking to a doctor or somebody of that nature. And um, found out later it was the hospital chaplain. And I said, is David Money at this hospital? And he said, yes, he is. And I said, we will be there in 40 minutes. And he said, ma'am, ma'am, just take your time. Don't rush. And I said, I'm not going to. I said, we will be there in 40 minutes. And he, in turn, ended up telling me over the phone that David was dead. He did not even know who I was, did not ask any questions. Are you home alone? Are you driving? And I think to myself, what would have happened if I had been driving? Cry. If my husband wouldn't have been home, I would have taken off in my car. I wouldn't have known where I was going, but I would have taken off and headed towards Columbus. Right. No one ever should have to hear that. And what he took away from me of not being able to be with David. Mm -hmm. I'll never have that back. I'll never get that. The sergeant, now he's a major for Franklin County Sheriff Department. He was on David's case. I couldn't have asked for a better police officer. He's our angel. Yeah. He has been so good to me and my family, and I truly appreciate him. And because of him, I got a law passed in memory of David to add two emergency contacts with our driver's license. This way, if there is ever an accident or a medical emergency and you are signed up, the police will know who to notify instead of having to hear it the way I heard it. Yes. And I think that is something that we take for granted, yes. that that would be the process, but it's it's not then. No, no, it's very, very hard for police to find family. Almost all the police officers that I have ever spoke with said 85% of the time they have to go back to your place of employment to get the next of kin. Because every place you go where you work, go to school, go to the doctors, you put next of kin on everything. And so most of the time they have to go back to your place of employment to get your next of kin. 
Wow. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I miss him. I'm sure you do. And um, I'm sure this is not what he wanted. Um, <laughs> and, but I'm sure he's very proud of you for taking um, your pain and using it for good for others. Thank to you. spare them. Um, so looking ahead for us um, in the community across Ohio, is this a national law? No, I tried to get it to be that, but with the Fifth Amendment, if a state doesn't want to do it, they don't have to. Um, there are probably like 12 other states that are doing it now. It's in Illinois, Indiana, Colorado, uh, Maryland, New Jersey. Um, this lady found David's story on the internet in New Jersey. And Betty had found out somewhat the same way I did about her about daughter. Her. Mm -hmm. And she got the law passed in Sarah's name in New Jersey to add the next to kin with our driver's license. So what do we do then? What, what um, when it's, we go to renew our driver's license, that is something that we need to vocally say to them or will they ask us? They are supposed to ask you. They are supposed to say, you can now sign up for the next of kin and they will give you a form. And you can fill out the form right then and there and hand it back to them. Or you can take it home and mail it in yourself. And also you can go on to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles website and just go into the search and type in next of kin and it will come up and you can just do it right online. It takes maybe two minutes to put it online. Okay. And then I talked to a police officer um, a couple weeks ago and he said that it has helped him over and over of contacting family and being able to get the family to the hospital because some people have allergies, some people have heart conditions and different things and um, he said it has really helped them and then I was speaking with a state patrolman and she said that another thing is once you submit it, if your address has changed, oh. you need to go back in. Yeah, yeah, or phone numbers or yes. anything like that, yeah. And go back in and then submit the new address and the new telephone number. I mean, it is so easy to do. You just go in, you type in your, the contacts that you want, submit it, and you're done. So we can do this now, even though we're ne we've already maybe are in the middle of our four-year window yes. or whatever. Okay, we can go in at any time. And any time. Yes, okay. it does not matter. I mean, it do you don't have to wait until your license are renewed. Yeah. You can just please do it. Do it for your families. Do it for your loved ones. And what do we what do we ask for? What is it? How do we specifically ask for this? Just next of kin notification. That's how we could yes. pose the question. Yes. Okay. And if you go to my son's website, which is money-burge.com, um, if you go to his website and click on sign up now, it will take you directly to the website. It does, okay. Yes. All right, that's good to know. Well, I'm sure that your son, David Christopher Money, would be very proud of his mom and, Thank um, you. and stepping out in faith and um, coming on shows like ours and, and getting the word out. And um, I, wish you, I wish you peace. Thank you. God has just amazed me on many, many things. The people that I've got to meet, the people I've spoke with. I'm and sure. When I was going to the state house, I, I was just, I, I was physically tired and physically just emotionally drained. Yeah. And I have this, my stepdaughter made this beautiful collage of David. And I was like, I'm done. I, I'm just, I'm done doing this. I, I just yeah. can't do it anymore. And I walked in the house and I looked straight at his picture. And it was like, he said, Mom, don't you ever quit oh. and don't you ever give up please don't ever stop this and it was just like I don't know there was just something that came over me and I just said you're right David I can't I can't do it because of 
because of you and what they did to me. Yeah. Well, God bless you. Thank God bless you. bless your heart. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you.